Passive income. To some, it's the ultimate goal. It's what they're working towards, and it's the one thing that can finally essentially set them free, can give them financial freedom and freedom from nine to five jail. I feel like I'm finally free. But now to others, it's a total myth. It's a completely made up fairy tale that is completely impossible. It is total bull so which is it is passive income the goal is it something that's attainable or is it just a long forgotten dream that a lot of people are chasing that they're never going to get to well before we get started with today's video i'm going to tell you right now that passive income is 100 percent achievable to a certain extent a little bit more on that later but if passive income is something that you've been thinking about or something that you've been wanting to try to achieve or something that you've even been doubting then make sure you check out this video all the way through because in it i'm going to explain to you exactly why it is something that's achievable and how you yourself can achieve it as well. Now, before we get started with today's topic, if you want a little bit more information on everything that I'm covering in today's video, then check out the description down below. In it, there's gonna be a link to a relevant article down there. And also, if you want a cheat sheet that's gonna have everything that I'm gonna be talking about, including some of my personal tips and tricks, then make sure you go ahead and comment down below the hashtag passive income and let me know what your takeaway is from this video. Once I see that you went ahead and did that, I'll reply back with the link to the sheet. All right, now let's get to it. All right, so to get started, what exactly is passive income? Well, for those of you that don't know, passive income is just that. The way you think about the phrase passive income, that's exactly what it is. It's you just having a passive or really an income source that you don't really have to do much to it other than your usual maintenance here and there. And that's one of the main points about today's video. So like I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of people say that it's either completely unachievable because it's unrealistic, while others think it's this entire dream. Well, here's the thing. It kind of lands right in the middle. So there are certain businesses that we're going to talk about in today's video. We're going to talk about multiple ones, but there are certain businesses that you can set up and you can just let them do their thing and you can keep getting paid without really having to do much. But that's not to say that you don't have to do anything. So for one, you do need to put work in at the beginning. In order to have any source of passive income, you're going to have to put work at the beginning to have everything set up. You can't just magically snap your fingers and have a magical source of income, just bringing in money every single month. While that is absolutely amazing and it sounds like a great dream, it's not going to happen. So you do need to put in some work at the beginning in order to get your passive income source set up. Now, what happens afterwards is really going to depend on the type of business. There are going to be some businesses that you can just set them up, let them do their thing, and they'll bring a little bit of money every once in a while. While there's other businesses that you're going to be able to set up, let them do their thing, and then constantly maintain them, maybe once a week, once every few weeks, check in on them, see how everything's going, make sure that you have, let's say, if you're selling certain things, make sure you have your inventory up to date, you have the newest products, things like that that can really be a source of passive income that just requires a little bit of maintenance here and there that really has the potential to scale and ultimately take over your entire nine to five. So like I mentioned at the beginning, where do we land when it comes to passive income? Is it a magical dream or is it something that's just completely unattainable? Well, like I said, we're right in the middle. It is an awesome thing to do. It's essentially everyone's dream, but it does have some work that needs to be done especially if you want it to be good enough to be able to, let's say, overtake your nine to five. So what are some of the different types of businesses that you can start to actually create a form of passive income? Well, let's start with our favorite or number one, dropshipping. So dropshipping can in fact be a source of passive income, but only if you do it correctly. So there's two ways of doing dropshipping. The first one is gonna be your traditional way of dropshipping. You open up your online store, somebody places an order in your store, you place that order with your supplier, your supplier ships it out, and you update your customer with a tracking number. Now that's traditional dropshipping, but that in itself does require work for every single order that comes in. So every single time somebody places an order in your online store, whether that be on your Shopify store, your Etsy store, your Amazon or eBay store, every single time that somebody places an order, you're gonna have to take that customer's information go to your supplier's website, add the item to your cart, and then put in your customer's information and then have them ship it out to it. And then once that tracking number is available, once the item's actually shipped, you yourself then need to go grab that tracking info and then update your customer with it. Now that doesn't sound too passive now, does it? Well, it's, it's not. <laughs> it really isn't because you're gonna be doing work for every single order you get. And if you have a lot of work, if you have a lot of orders, you're gonna be there for quite some time. But the way that you can do this to actually make it into a source of passive income where you really have to be hands off is by implementing automation. When you implement automation with a tool like AutoDS, 
what ends up happening is instead of you having to take that order information or your customer's information and give it to your supplier, HuddleDS does that for you. And then instead of you having to log into your supplier's website and then taking that tracking number and updating your customer with it, AutoDS will do that for you as well. We got you. The only thing that you're really going to have to do is maintain the store by bringing in more products, looking for more trending and more winning products. But you don't have to do this every single day. This is something that you can do maybe once a week, once a month, something along those lines, you know, just to keep your store going and try to keep scaling. So let's take a couple of minutes really fast so I can show you exactly what I mean. So first of all, one that I didn't mention is importing your products. When you wanna bring in new products to your store, you're gonna to have to copy over all of the pictures, all of the titles, the descriptions, all of the variations, the pricing, and that takes time. So if you're using something like AutoDS, if you're using an automation tool like AutoDS, then you can automate that part as well. So through AutoDS, you have an entire marketplace where you can import products from. So this is our marketplace. And if you scroll through it, you can find all these different products, which you can import into your store in just the click of a button. So let's say I want to import this one right here, this splash pad. All we have to do is click on import draft and it gets imported into our draft section automatically. But besides that, let's say I want to import these dog bowls. All I have to do is simply click on the link, go ahead and copy it over, run back to my AutoDS account, add products, we could do a single product for this case, paste in the link and edit now. And that's all we got to do. So everything is going to be imported to your draft section where you can then go ahead and edit anything that you need. So you can go ahead and optimize the title. You can change the description, all of the different variations, the pricing, everything can be done directly from this page. Now, going back to what I mentioned earlier about automating your orders as well. So once you get an order, this is what you're going to see. So the order is going to come through here and this is where you're going to have your status. So you can see in this case over here, it's showing that this particular order has been ordered. So it's still waiting for shipment. Now, once the order is shipped, it's going to automatically change over to shipped or you can change it yourself. Now I have it set to automatically change the status. So that way I know when the item was shipped already. Same thing goes for the tracking number. Once the tracking number is provided on here, once your supplier provides you with the tracking number, it'll be updated here on your AutoDS dashboard, which in turn will be updated in your marketplace so your customer knows that the item was shipped. So you see how much easier it is and how much more passive the entire business is once you start to implement something like automation. It really takes all of the legwork and all of those tedious tasks, those day-to-day -day tasks, it takes them away from you and it automates the entire thing. So that way, all you have to do is focus on scaling, focus on bringing your business and trying to make it grow even more. But let's say if you want to take a week off, you want to take two weeks off, maybe even three weeks off, you'll be perfectly fine. The only thing that you need to do is just make sure you keep an eye on your messages because you might have customers every once in a while reaching out to you, but that's just part of any business. So if you want to take maybe three weeks off and just leave your business or your dropshipping store on autopilot, then by all means, you can go ahead and do that and just kick back for a couple weeks. And that is the true meaning of passive income. Now, what other businesses are there that we can start to achieve this as well. Well, let's go ahead and find out. So another business, let's say at number two, you have rental properties. Now rental properties are a fantastic form of income because it's one of those things that you really don't have to do much for. The only thing with rental properties is that you are gonna have to have startup capital. With a business like dropshipping, you're not gonna have that startup capital because you don't have to purchase any inventory upfront. And really the only time that you have to purchase anything or put any money upfront is when you get an order. And even then it's gonna be pretty minimal. Typically we tend to keep our products maybe usually about less than $20. So it's not too much that you have to put up front unless you're doing high ticket drop sharing, but that's for a different video. But besides that, besides the upfront money, really the only thing that you're gonna have to do when it comes to rental properties is gonna be one, maintaining the property itself and two, manage it because it is gonna be your place that you're renting out. So you wanna make sure that the people that you're letting live in there are, you know, good for the place that they're going to take care of it. So you're going to have to act as some sort of a manager and you're also going to have to maintain the property. But again, that's not something that's going to take too much of your time. It's something that you're going to do maybe once or twice every week, every few weeks, if that. And even then, when it comes to maintaining the properties, you don't have to do much in that part either, because most of the times somebody else is hired to come do the actual work. Excuse me, we, we've rented this house from you. Yeah, well, uh, any problems? No, there's no problems, mate, just like... With the house? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the house, but like, what are you doing here? I live here. <laughs> now, another source of passive income is affiliate marketing. Now, with affiliate marketing, you really don't have to do much except promote links or promote products. 
So most of the times when it comes to affiliate marketing, the people that are doing these businesses are gonna be content creators. So people that create content, not just videos, but also articles. So the way that affiliate marketing works is, let's say you're the content creator. You create a blog or you make a video and you tell somebody click on this link to make the purchase. Your reader or your viewer goes to that link, they click it, they make a purchase for the product, then you get a commission for referring them. And that's what affiliate marketing is. It's really just commission-based sales through the internet instead of you know having to go to your regular nine to five job where you do sales. So it's kind of like the same thing. But the cool thing about this is that whatever you put out there, let's say you make a few videos or you write a few articles with those links, they're gonna be on the internet forever. Forever. So somebody can find those links today or somebody can find those links a year from now. But the goal here is gonna be to promote those products and make as much content as you can. Because as we all know, the internet is a vast sea of literally everything. So anything that you post on there can get lost pretty easily. So you need to be strategic. You need to know what you're doing. And a lot of the times you're also going to need to have an audience. When you have an audience, it's a lot easier to sell them different types of products or work with different companies as an affiliate marketer. Now, like I said, affiliate marketing is one of those that you can really just set up and let it do its thing. You're really not going to have to do any maintenance with it, but you are going to have to keep up with the content creation. And another thing is you're going to have to be good at content creating. So you're going to have to know how to make videos. And if you don't make videos, you're going to have to know how to write articles or how to grab somebody's attention and have them click on a link. Most of the time, these are going to be people like influencers or again, content creators. So if you're not into content creating, if you're not somebody to write articles or get in front of the camera, then affiliate marketing might not necessarily be for you. All right, the last form of passive income that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be digital products. Now with digital products, this is also one of those that you're gonna to have to have some sort of skill for, it, whether it be creating different templates, designing different images, or whatever it is. As long as you can create a digital product, then you can set up a digital product store where people are going to come and just constantly purchase your products. Now, the point behind this is to be able to sell different types of digital assets. So you can sell, let's say, different types of images for print on demand. You can sell different songs. You can sell different types of sound effects. You can sell maybe templates for people to create calendars or something like that, or to print out their own calendars. The point behind this is to be able to create a digital asset that whenever somebody purchases it, you don't have to fulfill anything and neither does anybody else. It's something that the marketplace does automatically. Let's say Etsy or Shopify, when you upload a digital product, an email is sent to the customer after the purchase is done and they can download their product through there. That way you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is get that product set up in the first place, create that product and then list it. Now, when it comes to this, this is also another true form of passive income but it is gonna require a skill. So if you know how to create certain types of templates or if you know how to design on, let's say Photoshop, then this could be the perfect source of passive income for you. All right, so now that we know the different types of passive incomes that you can create and what passive income really is, let's go ahead and compare it to active income. But what's active income? Well, active income is really any source of income that you have that you have to be active in. Anything that you actually have to, let's say, go to work for. So really, it's just having to do something in exchange for money and actively doing it, not just letting it run by itself and then bringing in the dough. You actually have to put in the work day to day. And if you don't put in any work, you don't get paid. So what's the difference between passive income and active income? Well, for one, the scalability. With passive income, since you already have that money coming in, since you already have that income starting to come through, you have a lot more time that you can use to reinvest into your business to continue scaling it, continue growing it, and bringing in even more money. Whereas with active income, that's a lot harder to do because your time is gonna be tied up pretty much the entire time that you're trying to make that money. So you don't really have that time freedom that you have with passive income. And really, that's actually two benefits that I just covered. One, how easy it is to scale a passive income source, and two, the freedom of time that you have with passive income. Now, number three, you also have the freedom of pretty much location. You have location freedom. You have the ability to work from wherever you want. For the most part, when it comes to passive income, since you don't have to be actively there doing any of the work, you can manage it from pretty much anywhere. Take dropshipping, for example. You can do it from your office. You can do it from your school. You can do it from your vacation home. You could do it from your house, from the library, literally from anywhere. 
as long as you have an active internet connection, you can go ahead and maintain, grow, or do whatever it is that you need to your dropshipping store. Now, what about with something that you need to be a bit more hands-on with, like let's say rental properties? Same thing. You can still technically do this from any other state. I know a lot of landlords that don't even live in the same city that they have their properties in because really there's not much you have to do. You can set up a portal where your tenants can make a payment and whenever there's any issues with the place, you just call somebody and they go fix it. You don't really have to be there to do much of anything. And last but not least, financial security. So you're going to be financially secure with either or as long as you're getting what you need to get done done. But the biggest difference is going to be, let's say with passive income, if you already have money coming in, most of the time, if you keep doing what you're doing, that income is going to keep coming through. Now, with active income, that's not necessarily the case because the moment that you stop working, you stop bringing in that money. Unless, let's say, you have vacation hours. But once those vacation hours run out and you stop working, there's no money. You're not going to be making any money. So you can be a bit more financially secure with an already established source of passive income than you can with a source of active income. So how can we go ahead and get started actually establishing one of these sources of passive income? Well, let's go ahead and actually set one up right now, shall we? So for this example, what we're going to do is set up a source of dropshipping passive income. And this is how you can get started. So the first thing that you need to do is conduct proper product market research and choose a niche. So what products do you want to sell? What category of products do you want to sell? My suggestion, pick a category or pick a niche that you're passionate about something you actually know about because that in itself is going to make it a lot easier for you to succeed simply by you already knowing the market and you already knowing what products can actually work and what people are going to be hyped for what products people are actually going to want to spend money on now if you need some help on what products to choose or what niche to choose then you can for one check out our blog on our blog we have tons of different articles that cover all of the different niches that there are and some of the best dropshipping products that you can start offering as well within those niches. Besides that, you also have this YouTube channel where we have the same thing, but in video format. So it's a lot easier for you to go through, or at least in my case, it's easier to go through videos than it is for articles, but to each their own. Now on this channel, we're going to have different playlists as well. We're going to have suppliers playlists where you can find out where to source your different products and products and niche videos where you're going to be able to learn what the best products are to dropship and what the best niches are to dropship as well. Besides that, once you sign up for AutoDS, you're also going to have access to a lot of different resources. So for one, like I mentioned earlier, you have the marketplace. On the marketplace, you have tons of different products that are currently trending and people are actually searching for. Aside from that, you have the handpicked products section. On this side, what you have is even more products, except these are all handpicked by expert dropshippers. All of these products are guaranteed to either be currently trending or have a history of trending or being best sellers. Besides that, once you click into one of them, like let's say this little mobile phone umbrella, you have a lot of information on here that can help aid you in your product research. So for when you have something like an engagement score, which tells you how active this product is on social media, how many people are inter interacting with it and how many people are actually clicking on the links, liking the videos, commenting on the videos, all of that stuff. And you also have a saturation score. So how active is the market with this particular product? How many people are currently trying to sell this product? Besides that, you have a target audience section where if you're running Facebook ads, you know how important your target audience is. This is going to tell Facebook or TikTok ads, let's say, who to market the product to. And if you're doing organic marketing or if you want to just start posting up a few videos on TikTok or Facebook and see if they can bring in some free traffic to your store or to your product, then we also have a social ads section. Here you have a few different videos on Facebook and TikTok that are advertising this same product. So that way you can learn more or less how to structure your content or what other people are doing in order to market theirs. And last but not least on this side, we have profit analysis. So how much can you source this item for versus how much is it being sold for and how much money can you make alongside with how many people have actually ordered this product. So this one, you can see that over 600 people have ordered it. So it could be the start of a trending product right now. Now, the next thing you need to do is set up your online store. So where do you want to sell your product now in order to have a true source of passive income? Like mentioned earlier, you're going to have to automate your business. So there are going to be a few marketplaces that are compatible with AutoDS 
that give you the ability to automate the entire process. And a few of those are going to include in terms of your own website, let's say, you're going to have Shopify, Wix and WooCommerce. On these platforms, you can create your own website and upload all of your own products. Now, the other ones are going to be marketplaces. The marketplaces are going to be websites where you go and you set up shop on and you use somebody else's services. So this is going to include Etsy, eBay, Amazon and Facebook Marketplace. So these are going to be different marketplaces or different websites where you can sign up, open up your online store and upload products to there. The main difference is going to be the fact that people are not going to know that your products are on your online store if you're using, let's say, Shopify. So you're going to need to bring in traffic to your store if that's the route you decide to go through. Now, if you sell through a marketplace like, let's say, Etsy or eBay, people already go to those websites ready to make a purchase. So as long as you have the proper images, the right pricing, good titles, then your products are likely to come up in front of the eyes of customers where they can easily make a purchase. Now, another major difference between selling on your own website versus a marketplace is going to be fees. So you're going to make more money selling on your own website versus selling on a marketplace. Marketplaces tend to have higher fees. eBay, you can expect to pay maybe about eight to 15 percent. Etsy is going to be six percent plus. I think it's 30 cents per sale, whereas let's say Shopify is only going to be 30 cents plus two to three percent for the credit card processor. That's it. So there's a big difference when it comes to fees. Now, I know one of the biggest issues when it comes to starting up your own online store on Shopify is creating a store. And I know a lot of people have issues with this because for one, it takes a long time. And two, some people just don't really have the technical know how on how to get it done and make everything cohesive, you know, so have matching colors, have the right text and all that stuff. So if this sounds like you, which trust me, it's definitely me. You can opt in to use the AutoDS AI Shopify store builder where you can get your own pre-made store through AI in less than two minutes. If you want more information on that, just check out the cheat sheet or check out this video right here. All right. Next, you need to find winning products. Now, one of the easiest ways to find winning products, like I mentioned earlier, is going to be through the AutoDS handpick product section. But there's also other resources that you can use as well. So for one, if you want to validate a product or a niche, you can also use Google Trends. So Google Trends is a perfect source to be able to validate your niche. So let's say right now, for example, I want to see if swimwear is worth selling or not. So I want to open up a store that focuses on summer essentials or swimwear. Now, when is it that this product is trending? Well, we can check out Google Trends. So through Google Trends, we can go ahead and set the timeline to the past five years and search up our term, in this case, swimwear. And we can see when all of the spikes and when all of the dips are. So down here, no sales are being made up here peak sales are being made. So when should we start selling this product? Well, we're not going to sell it up here because if we do start all the way at the top, then there's nowhere to go but down. But if we start all the way at the bottom, then there's nowhere to go but up. So in this case, using the data that we see through Google Trends, we can see that about October to November is when it's at the lowest. Same thing goes for 2023. Go back to 21. Same thing about November back to 2020. Same thing. November and October is going to be the lowest. So this is when you want to start stocking up your store or creating your store for this particular niche. So that way, when it starts picking up around the beginning of January, you're already stocked up and ready to start selling these products. Now, another important thing that's related to the products is finding the right suppliers. So where are you going to source these products from? Now, through AutoDS, we have quite a few dropshipping suppliers that we've partnered up with that you can also use to automate your dropshipping business, specifically in terms of importing products and placing the orders. So just to name a few, some of the most popular ones that we work with are going to include AliExpress, eBay, Etsy, Amazon. Amazon is a huge one. Alibaba, Costway, DHgate, Banggood, and a lot more. Now, besides that, we also have the AutoDS private suppliers. Now, the private suppliers are part of the marketplace, but I didn't show this to you earlier because this is a special side of it. This is the supplier side of it. So on our marketplace, you have the option to be able to switch over the supplier to AutoDS suppliers. Now, this gives you quite a few benefits. For one, it gives you some of the best pricing out there because our private suppliers give us special pricing. But besides that, you also have the option to brand your products or your packaging. So look at this product, for example, you can see that it says customizable branding. What that means is that you can go ahead and upload your logo and that logo will be printed on one, the invoice and two on a custom thank you card that's included in each order. That makes the customer experience a lot more personal. It really adds a personal touch for the customer and it helps them come back and order more. Also, I can't stress enough the importance of finding the right suppliers. 
if you work with a bad supplier or let's say a fake supplier that can do so much harm to your business simply because for one customers might never receive the item two if they do receive an item it might be very bad quality which in turn is going to reflect on your business not the supplier because remember we're drop shipping with drop shipping people don't know who our supplier is they think that we're shipping the products out ourselves so if our customers receive a bad quality product they're going to think that we were careless and we just shipped it out to them without caring and that's going to look bad on us that can lead to one refunds two complaints and bad reviews three chargebacks and four customers that just don't come back all right so another thing that you need to focus on is going to be your marketing now if you're selling on a platform like etsy or amazon that's not really something you have to worry too much about the only thing you're going to have to worry about in this case is if you decide to run ads which for the most part on these marketplaces i don't but if you're drop shipping on your own store like let's say on shopify or wix then you are going to have to worry about your marketing because if you don't market your products you're not going to be getting any customers nobody is going to know that your store is even there in the first place now for this what you need to do is for one find your target audience as you saw through the handpicked product section you can find an established audience through the different product listings but you also want to know who your audience is if you're selling pet products you're not going to be targeting let's say parents because that demographic of people doesn't really have much to do or anything to do with the pet niche if you're selling pet products you need to know that the people that you're going to target is going to be pet owners nobody else you want to target people that have pets because nobody else is going to care about those products besides that you also want to make sure that your seo is optimized so what's seo search engine optimization it's pretty much different keywords that google looks for within your listings and within your website to be able to suggest your page to people that are searching up those same keywords besides that you want to do content marketing so like like i mentioned earlier for affiliate marketing content marketing is going to include videos and articles so make videos make videos using the different types of products maybe come up with a video structure that talks about a pain point and then it uses your product as a solution those work very well or do the same thing but in written format instead of making a video make a few articles and last but not least make sure you use social media if you're not using social media if you're not on tiktok if you're not on instagram if you're not on youtube then you're missing out on a massive massive amount of potential customers because practically everybody at this point is on social media and if your business isn't on social media you're missing out on a lot and you could potentially fail all right last but not least the last thing that you really need to focus on is going to be your customer service because if you provide bad customer service then customers are not going to come back or they're not going to place an order in the first place which in turn is going to either slow down or completely stop your source of passive income so one of the biggest things that i always talk about when it comes to customer service is having the right suppliers but what does one have to do with the other well simply put our customer service is essentially a reflection of our supplier's customer service let's say your customer has a question about a particular product that we don't have the answer to we need to forward that question to our supplier then we need to wait for that supplier to reply back to us before we can answer our customer now if we have a supplier with bad communication let's say it takes them two days to get back to us then it's going to take us two days and a little bit of extra time to get back to our customer that's way too long for us to answer our customers we need to get back to our customers at a maximum of one day so do not pass 24 hours when replying back to your customers for absolutely anything because by that time they're either going to be one long gone or two they're going to forget they messaged you in the first place now something that's very helpful in this case is to get a virtual assistant if you go on a website like fiverr you can find virtual assistants for pretty cheap most of the times they're going to be in a few different countries so you're going to have to message them and make sure that communication is adequate but most of the times hiring a virtual assistant can be a blessing in disguise because honestly they make work a lot easier they take care of a lot of your day-to-day -day tasks that you don't have time for and really hiring a virtual assistant would add to creating your overall source of passive income and that's pretty much everything that you need to know about passive income drop shipping passive income and how to get started with it what did you think of today's video let me know down in the comments below i would love to hear your thoughts on it remember if you want access to the cheat sheet all you have to do is go ahead and leave a comment with the hashtag passive income and let me know what your takeaway was from this video also in the description down below there's going to be a link to a relevant article with a bit more information for you as well huge thank you to everyone for watching especially if you made it all the way to the end as always it truly means a lot to me please make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos as always my name is mario with AutoDS, and catch you all next time